So we want to put our renewed knowledge about the relationships between position and velocity and acceleration to good use. Namely, we want to use them to remind ourselves about the general formula for falling bodies. All right, so falling bodies or thrown bodies. So in particular, we do a lot of throwing balls off of cliffs and things like that. So we have a ball. We're going to throw it from an initial height. We're going to throw it vertically upward or downward. Um, upward is, of course, if you throw it up. Down is if you throw it down with some initial velocity uh, on some planetary body. Now, keep in mind, if it's positive, the initial velocity is positive, excuse me. If the initial velocity is positive, it means that you threw it upwards. So this initial velocity, which we'll call V0. If you throw it upwards, that means V0 is positive. If you throw it downward, that means V0 is negative. Simple as that. All right, so we throw it, and of course we're talking about falling bodies because we're talking about straight up and down motion. That's all we can do at this point. Um, so you don't imagine the ball going out away from the cliff. You imagine throwing it straight up and down. So this is still one dimensional because that's all we've ever worked with so far. We will expand on that in this course to include a little bit more, but you really get into it in Calculus 3 when you have more dimensions. All right, so we're throwing it upwards or downwards. The initial velocity V0 is up if it's positive, down if it's negative. We're going to find the ball's position, um, um, both imperial and metric, so we'll talk about that, uh, any time after throwing. Now keep in mind that the initial position is S0, which they didn't actually give it to us, but we would just assume that it was. And we're going to assume um, acceleration due to gravity on this planet is constant, neglecting our resistance, because that's as far as we can tell how gravity works. <laughs> Um, I'll let you know if I win a Nobel Prize to find, prove that it's not. Okay, so if we assume that acceleration due to gravity is constant, that means that A of t is equal to some constant, A0, right, initial acceleration. So let me write that. A of t is equal to A0 constant. And as far as we know, that is how gravity works on a planetary body, at least as far as we are concerned for these particular instances. We don't want to get into magnetic fields and things like that. All right, now velocity, we already said on the previous page, is the integral of acceleration. So it's the integral of that A0 with respect to time. All right, well, that's a constant. So the integral of it would be A0 T plus a constant. But the constant is V0, that initial velocity. And we note that V0 is positive if you throw up. V0 is negative if you throw down, what I already wrote above. But what if you just drop it, if you don't give it an initial velocity? So oops, it's zero. If you don't throw it and give it force on your own, if you just drop it, then that would mean a V zero of zero. All right, then, that's the note about V zero. How do I find position? Well, position is the integral a velocity, right? So that velocity is what we just found. So it'd be the integral of a zero t plus v zero with respect to time. And that would be, all right, so we would add one to the power of t. So that would make a zero t squared divided by two or in other words, multiplied by a half, right? We multiply by the reciprocal of the new power, plus, and then I'd have V0 times T, plus, and then my initial position, which would be S0. Now, note as well for this, if you're on a cliff or on a tower or something like that, so S0 is positive, 
if you're up on a cliff or building or something like that. Building, that's the abbreviation for building. S0 is negative. If you're in a canyon or a hole, right? S0 is zero if you're at ground level. Okay. All right. So this leads us to the general formula for falling bodies that we just proved work. A0 is constant in planetary bodies. You have initial position s of t right here, or excuse me, s of 0 is equal to 0 right there, s0, and v of 0 is equal to v0 right there. And on Earth, this is not true obviously for all planets, but on Earth we should just know that the initial acceleration, well actually the, the constant of acceleration due to gravity, is negative 32 feet per second squared, that would be imperial, and negative 9.8 meters per second squared, which would be metric. Obviously metric is used a lot more um, in physics class, because it makes more sense, um, we assume A0 is negative. Basically, one way or another, we have to have negative because gravity is pulling you down. So it's often assumed that um, A0 is negative. Usually assumed that way, just because it's more convenient for the math, etc. Okay, so then velocity, we just said, Velocity V of T is equal to A zero T plus V zero. And S of T is equal to A zero divided by two T squared plus V zero T plus S zero. And the imperial system, of course, is only used really in America anymore. <laughs> so this is metric, obviously. This is well, we sometimes call it the English system, but it's the American system at this point because we're the only ones that still use it. And it's imperial because the empire of Britain um, imposed it on the countries that they overtook. Now we can use these lovely formulae to solve problems, right? So if we already know some things about the situation, we can use all of these formulas to make predictions. So, for example, if we presume that we have a ball thrown from a height of six feet, hello, S0, right? Height of six feet, that's an initial position, S0 equals six. In an upward direction at a speed of 132 feet per second. So all of this upward direction, speed of 132, that's getting us V0 is equal to positive 132 because it's thrown upward. So upward is why it's positive. And we're going to ignore air resistance because we're not really in a physics class. <laughs> okay, so find the functions for velocity and position. Well, since this is using feet and feet per second, that means that A0 has to be the negative 32 feet per second squared. That is, well, that is the constant of acceleration on the Earth due to gravity. All right, so then velocity would be the integral of negative 32 dt, which would be negative 32t plus v0, which is 132. There is velocity. I integrated my acceleration and I found it. I used calculus. Now position would be the integral of that. So position is the integral of negative 32 one. Integral of negative 32t plus 132 with respect to time, which is negative uh, 16t squared plus 132t plus 6, because that's what S0 is. There's position, there's velocity. So we've done part A using calculus. Right, we showed the integral. 16, of course, because you add 1 to the power, and 32 divided by 2 is 16. Now, part B. How high will the ball travel? Well, what they're asking about is where is the maximum? 
Now the maximum, we remember from Calc 1, occurs when the derivative is equal to zero. So the max height, local maximums, remember those? Relative maximums. So max height will be when the derivative of position, s prime of t, which is v of t, is equal to zero. All right, so negative 32t plus 132 equals zero. That means that negative 32t equals negative 132. And that means t is, let's grab decimals really quick, negative 132 divided by negative 32, oops, divided by, wrong button, there we go. 4.125. Or if you like to see the fraction, it'd be 33 eighths. Okay, so 4.125 seconds. This is when it happens. Not how high the ball will travel. It's just when it will reach that height. So we need to find the max height, which would be s of 4.125, which I can use Desmos for. I mean, there's nothing stopping me. So let me go grab a Desmos. So let me do it this way. All right, so v of t was equal to negative 32t plus 132. s of t is equal to negative uh, 16t squared plus 132t plus 6. So if I want s of 4.125, there it is, 278.25 feet. And I can say I did it with Desmos. Lovely. All right, part C. At what speed does the ball hit the ground? Hmm. Okay, so it hits the ground over here. So I need to find when that occurs first, and then I need to know the velocity at that point. Now, we don't really need to go solving this by hand. So it hits the ground is when S of T is equal to zero. But s of t is negative 16t squared plus 132t plus 6 is equal to 0. Well, we are in calculus 2, so we can use our computers to help us with that. So let me, I'm going to not graph velocity for a second. Shift my graph so that I can actually see what the heck is going on here. So I want um, 0 to 10. That's fine but zero to, and you can see on the graph that I graphed on the notes that I'm going pretty high up there. All right, so I want to know when this will hit, and I can just click over here, and it tells me it's 8.295. Okay, so it hits the ground when s of t is equal to zero. That happens when t is equal to 8.295 seconds. I wasn't asked to do this by hand, so I don't need to. Right, found with Desmos. I just need to notate how I found things. <laughs> All right, so 8.295 seconds, no problem. But I want to know the speed when it hits the ground. Mm, okay, so the velocity when it hits the ground, which is not the constant, right? But we'll get there. Velocity when um, it hits the ground. 8.295. Alright, so I can go grab Desmos and I can tell it, hey, find me V of 8.295. And it tells me it's negative 133.44. That would of course be feet per second because it's velocity. Now that's the answer. That's velocity. Speed is not velocity. Speed is related to velocity. Speed is um, the magnitude of the velocity. So speed 
is the magnitude of velocity, which is a little bit like taking the absolute value. Matter of fact, it's a lot like taking the absolute value. So we're going to take the absolute value of negative 133.44. Which is obviously 133.44 feet per second. Think of it this way velocity is speed with direction. So it can be plus or minus. Speed cannot. Speed has to be a positive number, always.